We've got a cool view of the Wirecast gear from this perspective. We've got a camera that is, uh, it can be used with on a ro rotating um, slider. We've got a new ceiling mounted camera that's gonna show you guys some really cool angled shots. So you're gonna see all of that in this production. I think we're almost live on Facebook. We're certainly live on we're Facebook. We're getting live on YouTube, so let's get started. All right, welcome everybody to PTZ Optics Live. We are live every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. That's right, we're bringing you the latest and greatest with pan tilt zoom technology and more about live streaming. In this awesome episode of our Friday live stream, we're gonna talk about the Stream Geek Summit, which will take the place of this stream next Friday. That's right, there'll be no PTZ Optics show next Friday. There'll be no show next Friday because we will be putting on a full day of education. You can watch for free, okay, on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. It's called the Stream Geek Summit, Google it. It's gonna be so much fun. Sign up for a free virtual ticket. But we're going to cover that. We're going to have an interview with Jeremy Klosterman of Wirecast. We're going to show the brand new Wirecast gear. We have new pan tilt limit features on PTZ cameras. And we're going to talk about why student broadcasters, this actually came from a high school. There was a high school that said, we want pan tilt limits. We'll talk nice. about why. Nice. Um, we have a P PTZ Optics webcam giveaway. You can sign up at ptzoptics.com slash giveaway. Still time. If you're watching, there's only 21 people entered to win. So you have a really good chance to, to win. Hi, Charles, on LinkedIn. And we're going to talk about PTZ control on Wirecast. All of that and more is going to be coming up. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. Make sure you're saying hi on the chat, in the chat, should I say. We're live on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitch right now. All right, guys, the first thing I wanna do is show off some of this tech in front of me. Uh, I got a couple different cameras. We're gonna try to use every camera angle uh -oh. in this show today. Mike, Good pick luck, one, Mike. any of them. We're gonna show every single one. Boom, here is a camera angle Mike set up from the ceiling showing the cameras so this leads me to the wirecast gear this is the wirecast gear 420 this is the brand new version rack mounted server grade product that we're going to be interviewing jeremy klosterman on today so take a look at that we'll show this in really cool detail we've got our ptz optics ndi camera and i got a couple things i want to mention about this camera We've got a cool little bar top arcade camera control unit designed just for broadcast clubs. So we'll talk about that. And then of course, our webcam that somebody's gonna win today. So Hopefully. let's start with the Wirecast gear and this NDI camera on the front. So this NDI camera right here is our NDI HX camera. And I wanna show really quickly why we have it labeled the way we have it. So on this side, we have the static IP address of the camera. And on this side, we have what I call the NDI friendly name. And this is so important when you're going to live stream an event and you've got, we have eight cameras and we've got 10 people helping us. So you really need to label every product and make sure everybody knows exactly what the product is, where it's supposed to go. And we take it a step further and we also have that information on the actual box. So on the box itself, we've got the labeling so that that way, and this has happened, trust me, I've done a lot of live streams in the past. You want the exact camera to go back into the right box. So every, you gotta label the box, you gotta label the camera, and then taking it another step further, and this is really important, I wanna just make sure everyone gets this, you label, the cables. So see this says rear stage left on there. I wish that was could be shown a little bit. Rear stage left camera dot 93. So we've got the bag labeled. But even more importantly, we have each side of each cable labeled properly. See that? Both sides of the cable. That way you can see 
you can plug the right cable into the right camera. And then on the network switch side, now that's the network switch side. We also have an SDI camera here, an SDI cable as well. Same thing. And this is so important because when you're plugging in SDI cables into the back of a Wirecast gear, you want to make sure that everything's set up properly. It tells you the exact name of the camera, the, IP, the last digit of the IP address, last you know, octet of the IP address. And so now you can't, you know, it makes you that much more confident that you're not going to mess up because everything's labeled and everything's ready. Yeah, we are certainly in a time crunch for our setup for the event next Friday. So it's important that everything is labeled so things can go as smoothly as possible. So uh, speaking of a time crunch, uh, just to give you guys an idea, here's another little piece of information that I wanted to share. Uh, basically, right here, we've got our literally our entire day set up. So what we've got on this piece of paper when, when you're doing a live stream is, is every single task that happens. So 5 a.m., build the stage. 5.30, run the cables. I know you guys probably can't read that. 6 a.m., do this. And then the same thing on the other side is every single camera and its IP address, every device on the network. So I can go to our Wirecast gear operator and say, here you go, here's your cameras, here's your NDI sources, here's the IP addresses so you can grab PPZ control. So it's not our first rodeo, and I just wanted to share that with you guys. If you're doing a big event, if you're worried about a big live stream, prep, 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 and of course, we'll be taking you guys behind the scenes on all of this coming up soon. Now our next, big feature for PTZ Optics cameras, something that came from actually the SAR High School, which who I wrote about in the Accelerated Broadcast Club curriculum book. So when I was writing this book, uh, which is a great book, you can get it for free at ptzoptics.com slash book. Um, I wrote this book to give broadcast clubs some ideas of what other broadcast clubs in the industry are doing. Right. Um, this school in particular does a lot of sports streaming. So their broadcast club helps live stream basketball, football, hockey, uh, volleyball, all of these sports. And they said, hey, Paul, we love having our IP joystick. And in fact, I've got my IP joystick here. This is part of the story. I'm going to grab it. And he runs out of frame. All right, here we go. You hold the IP joystick test. Sure. So they have their IP joystick. And it's all written about in this book. Very cool story. The SAR Broadcast Club in New York City, in the Bronx, they're actually going to be using, they're going to be our, one of our camera operators, the students. And I'll get into that story in a moment. And what was their request? Uh, they wanted to have pan tilt limits on the camera. Because you can imagine if you are operating this IP joystick, their broadcast club is on the third floor of a building in New York City, and their basketball court is on the first floor, mm -hmm. right? That's where the court is. So they actually sometimes will keep the students in the broadcast club and they'll just remotely control the camera. Excellent. Using NDI and IP control technology. But when you're that far away and you're not in the basketball stadium, when you're following the ball left to right, sometimes the student would go past the end of the court and into the crowd. Okay. Um, so they were like, if we could just have a limit at the end of the basketball court, we could just go whoop, and it would stop right at the, at the basketball Great court. Great for volunteer or... Uh, apprentice camera uh, oh, so good for volunteers and student camera operators so that is now available is that going to be a firmware ptz optics firmware okay um and you do need the brand new ptz optics either mac or pc software so pick up that software at ptzoptics.com apps and you can add pan tilt limits to your cameras now finally that brings me to the point of uh, the fact that we're going to be having an eSports Live tournament. And I want to show this in my 3D layout here in our presentation layout. And then we're going to bring Jeremy on and we're going to talk about why and how we're using the Wirecast gear in this setup. So this is the Dream Downtown on 16th Street in New York City. Beautiful hotel in the historic neighborhood of Chelsea. Yes. This is where you can see Tess and I on stage, actually. Take a look at this, Tess. I actually got us on there. Oh. We kind of disappeared there. We're behind that box. There we go. There we are. There we are on so stage. Fun. This is kind of what it would look like to be at the Dream Downtown. And whoops. Just in our summer attire. I know. Right in the middle of fall. <laughs> but 
To the left and right of the stage, you can see that we have eSports computers, and there's going to be a Rocket League tournament going on. And we we're working with the Center for Innovative Edu Educational Innovation, High School GG, Twitch, and Wirecast to do something that's really cool, including actually working with the SAR High School and Hofstra University. And what we really think is that eSports players, e kids who are interested in playing video games and using eSports in a productive environment are also going to be interested in helping the broadcast club live stream the event. Absolutely. So this Wirecast gear, because Wirecast is so intuitive and so easy to use, and the students actually use Wirecast at their school, um, they're actually going to be using this unit here to produce a full student-run eSports tournament. And I just think that story, and that's what we're going to talk to um, that's what we're going to talk to Jeremy about. That's why we've kind of made this cool little camera operator system that's going to be running a small little microcomputer with NDI Studio Monitor and an Xbox controller. I'll grab that. Sorry, I keep going There off he goes again. Um, this, we literally just plug an Xbox controller directly. I'll put that in front of this. Um, directly into this computer running NDI Studio Monitor. And boom, the students are now in that esports tournament world. So we're kind of trying to combine the worlds of broadcasting and streaming with esports and video games. It's a perfect marriage. In a way that I think will be very educational for students. So that is how we're using the Wirecast gear. And I want to bring in Jeremy now to talk a little bit about what he's excited about for this summit. It's going to be so much fun. And uh, Jeremy's actually teaching a workshop. So let's bring Jeremy on. How you doing, brother? Good. How are you guys? Good, good. Great, thanks. So we're going to see you in New York City in just a couple in a couple days. Yeah, it's going to be cold, right? It like will be chilly. Something like that. Yep. But no snow in the forecast or rain at this point. Take That's all right. It's always fun to be in New York. It is, especially at this beautiful hotel. And especially when everyone's gathering together the experts in the video production world of course you're one of those jeremy uh speaking on the behalf of wirecast i'd like to show off this wirecast gear but let's first let me ask you um tell me about this this workshop that you're going to be teaching at the stream geek summit yeah so i've been working with a lot of customers and clients on um on using wirecast in corporate presentation um corporate presentation then even in the educational spectrum using it more in the classroom so traditionally uh we have a lot of schools and corporate uh corporate companies using wirecast just to to stream out um but we're finding more and more using it in um in more of a all hands sort of meeting in a corporate world or in in the classroom for lecture capture and interactive presentations with the classroom. So uh, I've, I've one, uh, one high school in California that I've been working with that they're trying to implement Wirecast in the classrooms for use with, um, with student projects. Okay. So the students create their own projects and then the instructor then gets a stream from their uh, the student PC into their Wirecast gear system or in their Wirecast system, and then present it up on a smart board or in in a classroom presentation board. Uh, so so super interactive, and um, this educator's awesome. He he's like, man, my my kids are so creative, and I want to be able to show them uh, how easy it is to to do a production like this. Um, and then higher education, we're seeing a lot of lecture capture, bringing in PowerPoint presentations and slide slide decks, um, so they can stream it out to to students who aren't able to attend class. Uh, but then again, archive everything so they can post it after after the lecture, and and then students immediately have have access to that lecture. Wow, that's really impressive. I've heard about that a lot as well. A lot of students and teachers are, are starting to collaborate, especially when it comes to video production, because kids just find it fun. I mean, let's be honest, they just mm -hmm. do. Yeah, and we've got a lot of signups for that workshop already, so I think it's going to be a popular one. So that workshop is at 2 p.m. It's called Production for Corporate and Educational Video 
content. Now let's talk about this Wirecast gear, Jeremy, that we have in front of us. Um, I flipped it over so that we yeah. can show the back of this unit because that's where I think a lot of the inputs and outputs are going to be striking for folks. Tell us about this. I actually have some questions too. You've got an SDI out here as well. Can we use, yep. I, I've got some questions for you, but let's start over here. So obviously you've yeah, got one, sure. two, three, four SDI inputs. Yeah, so the Wirecast Gear 420 is uh, is really our our top of the line, and actually, it's it's been by far our most popular model. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's looking to do heavy streaming, uh, multiple platform streaming, um, confidence monitoring, everything like that, they they immediately go to the Wirecast Gear 420. So we have the the five SDI inputs. We have a we have a um, uh, OEM capture card that we put into this unit, which has the four ports. And then we did use a Blackmagic um, capture card for the input and output gives you the fifth fifth SDI in as well as the output. So um, what we're seeing on the house worship market a lot is uh, churches going out to an iMag screen or broadcasting into overflow rooms or, or anything like that. That's where the SDI output really comes into play. Uh, also confidence monitoring. So if you have a big confidence monitor that you want to set up, the SDI output is good for that as well. The other I like that. huge, yeah, uh, go ahead. Go I was ahead, gonna Paul. ask you, with that SDI output, can you embed audio into that as well? Um, yes, it's a, it's embedded audio, I, b I believe. Um, you know, you you got a unit before I did, so I okay. haven't been able to fully. Wow, fully I really like it. The reason why I ask is because I I wanted to take an output of this into a live view unit for the stream, and yeah. I noticed so you so you've got here got one two case. three four DisplayPort outputs, and I know DisplayPort supports audio, I know yep. SDI supports audio, so I was just trying to decide, you know, what's the best way to take a video output of this into the live view. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll have to double check that. Um, but probably for the um, to be safe until you test it out, do a display port output just to display port to uh, to HDMI into that live view. Cool. So yeah, so let's keep looking at this. So we mentioned so there's five SDI inputs that go up to 1080p, 60 frames per second. Um, yep. I also see an integrated uh, video disabled sticker here so i guess that's not needed right um, yeah so so what we did on the 420 is we put in that quadra graphics card which you see on the top right um that's a that that's a, a quadra card that allows for uh, hardware encoding so you can offload the cpu by doing uh most of your encoding right on that quadra card using that and and bank um encoders so Primarily, like if you're if you're doing a stream out to to LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube, you can do all of that encoding without touching your main CPU. Wow, uh, we're getting a couple of questions I'd like to address, and I can help as necessary. Uh, it leads into this part of the discussion. This is the this is that um, that Ethernet here. There's two gigabit Ethernet ports. And I love that you did that. My guess is, is that you're thinking about one for streaming and one for a local area network setup. So you can yep. actually have this on two separate networks at the same time. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, typically what we're seeing is, is customers having a, a separate VLAN just for their IP cameras, IP camera control, NDI networks, all of that. And then the other, the other network dedicated specifically for their live stream. And then, Obviously, this this device supports NDI because Wirecast supports NDI. Uh, we're getting a question about latency on this unit, SDI versus NDI. I have a little bit of experience with that because I've been testing, but I, I'll throw that one to you unless you want me to answer. Yeah, again, I haven't fully tested it out. I come from the from the main broadcast world where I had a broadcast switcher, um, and uh, you know, a lot of times you're looking for very very frame accurate. Um, low latency and from what i've been told the the latency on the sdi output is is very minimal um should be less uh low enough where you you're not going to notice lip sync issues um but again it, it really depends on how much conversion you have 
going out of that SDI into your projector or, or monitors. Exactly. And so I love that you have an SDI output on this device because when you start doing HDMI converter to SDI to back to HDMI right. and then plugging it into a projector, that's when there's an issue. But if you can take a direct SDI out and go into you know, a projector with SDI or just one yep. SDI to HDMI converter box, that'll reduce the iMag solution. But NDI versus SDI are going to be pretty much similar. Now it does, you do need to really look into optimizing your router and your switches so that, you know, the traffic can move smoothly. Uh, the, the last thing you want to do is be pulling down too much data to yeah. your gigabit port. So you can't be pulling in 10 full NDI sources or, you know, you're going to start to get congestion on your network. So it's a networking question. Uh, perfectly optimized NDI should be about the same as SDI. I still, you know, if you really, 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 really look at it, always have about 50 milliseconds of latency, no matter what I'm using. And so I always add between 50 and 80 milliseconds of latency or delay to my audio, you know, because let's be honest, I mean, there's never zero latency. That just doesn't happen. Um, so I always add a little bit to my audio, not a lot, not a full second, not a half second, not even a quarter of a second, but like a tenth of a second or less uh because there's always a little bit that's my that's my experience right now chris sanowitz is saying you can also use two network interfaces for something like speedify to bond multiple internet connections together interesting yeah yeah exactly and we have a lot of customers too um you know higher broadcasts where they they're doing um failover so they may even have two ISPs connected into the different networks and, and like a redundant stream output. Uh, I've seen that, I've seen that work um, in a couple of places, but, um, but again, you really have to have a, a good networking person to set that up and make sure everything's working properly that way. Yeah. And I mean, a basic thing to do, which I did with this Wirecast gear, and it's on our list is we just gave it a static IP address. We're only planning on using one, of these NIC cards, we gave the device a static IP address, um, even though I'm sure it would accept DHCP from our router, just so that everyone knows the IPs that are on our network. Now we're getting another question, speaking of latency, how easy is it to time align these XLR or TRS inputs? We didn't talk about these, Jeremy. So you've got two audio inputs here really really nice uh i was using these and i figured out which input it was in wirecast so you can bring a left and a right audio channel from your church's mixing board from the venue's audio system right into the device no need for usb which can be tricky because usb is difficult to extend but you know ethernet obviously is not or sorry xlr and quarter inch is not yeah. Yeah. So, you know, one of our big things are, uh, that people were asking for on the first Wirecast gear was having having a professional audio interface in there. So, um, you know, we'd we'd push everybody to a USB audio interface to get those XLRs in. And this time we, we really stepped it up when we offered this the audio interface right on the back of the unit. So bringing in balanced audio. Um, through the XLRs and, and giving you the flexibility for XLR or TRS uh, is huge. So like you said, you can, you can throw this in an analog setup um, where, you're, where you're pulling analog off or you know, pretty much any digital board is going to have XLRs out as well. So um, a lot of flexibility there. Um, yeah. Now, I got another question for you, uh, but we do have a giveaway yes. to get you pretty much immediately. Um, but I got one more question for you, and this is more yeah. of just a workflow perspective. It's not a difficult one in any, by any means. But now that Wirecast has PTZ control in this gear, and I want to mention Jeremy and I made a video all about the tech specs on our YouTube channel, so you can check this, this gear out. Uh, we also, I just, just published a video on YouTube about how to do PTZ control with PTZ Optics cameras and the Wirecast gear, which is a really cool case study. But Jeremy, it seems like kind of an amazing thing to have a producer also be able to control 
four cameras, six cameras, eight cameras. You know, it no. used to be these big platforms with shoulder mounted cameras and you need six people. If you wanted six cameras, you needed six people. Yeah. But now you can right. be a single person with the wire cast gear and six PTZ cameras and you can control them all and produce the stream. So how has that affected the industry? And what have you been seeing out there as far as like w smaller teams or is it is it just one producer with two or three PTZ cameras and they're just calling presets or is there a team? Is there one camera operator that has four cameras they're controlling and then one dedicated producer on Wirecast? Uh, now that you've had this feature for a couple of years, I'm interested to know what you've been seeing out there. Yeah, so uh, obviously with high school sports, we're still seeing a big uh, a big use case where they want a manned camera like on the sideline where they're zooming into plays, you know, watching watching everything a little bit more up close. But but I always tell customers that are doing high school sports or you know college sports also get those PTZs up you know up and wide, and then you have a big overview. And with Wirecast, you can set up all those presets and uh i was trying to grab my my excel but i have it hooked up um so i don't know if you're able to grab your x key controller real quick but but having having those presets available and and use um the x keys controller for wirecast is huge because then you assign the preset to the different shots and you can freeze the shot um uh, to a thumbnail in your wirecast interface where you're just calling up those shots those uh, by the by the x keys button mm -hmm. and the camera your ptz will move to that position when you call it up and preview and you take that shot live and it it just works perfect yeah we don't have our pre-program x keys wirecast keys yeah on we, don't, hand. We, don't, we don't have them here on hand but i yeah. i have to say i we've talked we've talked about it on our show before i wish i could show it now um, that is a game changer. Really cool. you, I know you guys spent a I'll, lot of time with X keys developing. I'll grab mine real quick if you keep okay. me off the camera. Yeah, sure. grab yours because it, it does help tell the story of what the Wirecast does so well. I, I'm going to draw a winner because I know a lot of people are asking for that. We've got Gary Pierce. Let us know if you're in the chat so you can claim your prize. You must be watching live and in the chat to get your uh, PTZ Optics webcam. And what was that, Gary Pierce? Gary Pier Piercy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop it in YouTube and Facebook. Okay. And we give each winner a moment to Amazing. claim their prize. Yep, got to be here watching live on the chat. Luckily, Jeremy's grabbing his X keys, which I really am glad he's showing that because it it made Wirecast for me easier oh, cool. to use. Look at that. Yeah, same same for me. Like I, again, I come from a broadcast where I was pushing buttons on a on a Ross uh, broadcast switcher. So when I first got my hands on this, I I thought it was a little gimmicky when I first heard that we were doing this uh, when we partnered with X Keys. But then when I sat down and and used this, totally changed my experience using Wirecast. Where I'm like, okay, this is this is comparable to a broadcast switcher now, where you're mm -hmm. pushing buttons, you're calling up your shot and preview taking it live and and again with the with the colors and everything like that in the new wirecast 13 uh software interface everything color coded it just makes sense so again when you have volunteers and students running it, it makes it extremely simple to use it really does i'm gonna pull another winner here to me the the layering system and the ability to clear everything with that x keys and the color coding system, I mean, it's really just, it's all there. All right, so we have Noble Thomas. Noble Thomas, are you here? Chris Sanowitz is here. Yes. Um, oh, who, do you have Facebook open? Yeah. Close it. Um, by the way, guys, let us know if you're here. So if you're if you are here to win this webcam, let us know because that'll speed along our process of pulling a bunch of winners here. So I'm gonna pull another one. Everybody just say hi. Let's in get the a chat. winner this time. Keep going. Melinda Grubb from Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, not far from St. Louis where I got married. 
All right, Melinda Grubb, are you here? Brian Palmer's here. Thanks for saying hi, Brian. Who wants you guys to win a webcam? Say hi if you're watching on LinkedIn. This is your chance to win the win a PTZ Optics webcam. Um, all right, I'm going to keep going. Gary Piercy, we already got him. Pick again. There's not that many people in this thing, so somebody's going to win. Jaron Jose. He is from Bangalore, India. All right, popping that in. Sounds like science. I know, Chris. You always say Xanowitz. I know. It's my fault. <laughs> All right. We have Fernando Sandoval from Mexico. Oh, wait. We have a winner. Oh, Sharan Jose is here. Yay! All right. Excellent. Great. We will be in touch with you about your shipment. Uh, and we'll go from there. Thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you for joining, Jeremy. You guys are the best. We will see you guys soon. Uh, we'll see you next week.